Come on. Vancouver's vibe, the beat 94.5, 130, of course, Ellie Potato, and force a big, big hit for you right now. <laughs> Thanks. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm very good. Glad to be in Vancouver. Welcome to the beat. Of course. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Good to be here. Good to be here. My first time here, actually. Yeah. And what are you thinking? I'm thinking, I'm thinking this beat playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, uh, you know, it's good to be here. It's a nice, yeah. very beautiful, actually. <laughs> You're a great BC radio native, station. Too. You're a BC native, so Vancouver's not new to you. Uh, no, I grew up in Victoria, British mm -hmm. Columbia, mm -hmm. you know, around these parts, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. I love coming home. I come home probably four or five times a year. I love it that much. Mm -hmm. I live in Toronto right now, but I always think about, you know, moving back or mm -hmm. part-time or whatever. I just love it. It's so just when you gorgeous. get homesick, you come home. Yeah, I definitely, bit. for some, some uh, nature R&R. &R. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For Tofino. Yes. Oh, yes. Or do you surf? Uh, no, but I like camp and hike and stuff, yeah. yeah. So you're in tonight. <laughs> you're going to be playing tonight. Yep, I'm playing tonight at the Orpheum Theater mm -hmm. with uh, with Shay, another great band, and, and actually my opening act, Shankini, is a local MC. Oh, Shankini. Yeah, she's a wonderful MC. Mm -hmm. um, I've collaborated with her in the past, and actually it's pretty exciting because it's uh, some of the funds are going to uh, the BC Co Women's Coalition oh. Support Women's Centers. Um, they've had some of their, their money cut out, a lot yes. of their money actually. So just spread awareness, you know, spread okay. awareness, let people know what's going on, and it's going to be real positive, good energy. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Question for you, of course, this is the good part. Yeah. <laughs> Folklore, latest CD, yeah. getting lots of uh, great reviews. Um, you've been working, of course, with uh, Gerald Eaton and Brian West. What's yeah. that been kind of like? Um, just amazing. I met the Philosopher Kings uh, about when I was 17, 18 mm -hmm. years old. Well, I first moved to Toronto when I was 17. I kind of was like, okay, i got to go there and, and see, see what I'm going to do with this music thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I got there and I started a trip-hop band. I worked full-time during the day. Wow. Um, I had an alarm company, actually, and then at night I made these tracks. Right. And then eventually I, went, I did a talent showcase called The Honey Jam mm -hmm. in Toronto. And that's where I met Gerald and my current mm -hmm. manager, Chris Smith, who also manages Chaos, Jellystone, right. Peepy Dobson. Anyway, so we hooked up and... I kept in touch with them, but I moved back to Victoria for one year because I wanted my songwriting to get better. I bought a guitar, I started mm -hmm. jamming and getting my songs up. And then finally they convinced me to come out to Toronto, we recorded a demo. Those guys are great. They're very uh, energetic, they're very youthful, they're adventurous, they're very ambitious with their music. They mm -hmm. like to um, raise the bar a lot, and that's why the pop music that we make, we always strive to make it original from other pop music and try to, try to really... Um, push the sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I know that I read something somewhere that said that working with them has helped you um, grow, of course, because you were uh -huh. very young when you broke uh, four years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Very, very young. So, I mean... It's 20, yeah. Exactly. 20 years 18 old. 18 when I met them, yeah. So, you know, that's, I mean, that's a lot to get your head around at that age anyway. They helped me incredibly mm -hmm. because I was into, you know, the more, I guess, underground sounds like, sure. like the trip hop and the electronic, but then they kind of went, hey, but you know, you used to love R&B when you were a kid, and it's mm -hmm. true, from the age of 12, Onwards, I was like absorbed in R&B and, and hip hop and urban music, and I listened to um, some Seattle stations. I would I would put my put my little antenna, you know, this mm -hmm. is before the beat. <laughs> I put my antenna, you know, on my radio or hang a hanger onto it mm -hmm. and try to get the signal. Um, and I loved it, so I, I incorporated some of that on the Wonelli mm -hmm. album. And they they kind of what I like to say is they spread my pop wings a little bit, and yeah. they kind of reminded me all the things that I do well instead of focusing on just one or two things. So that's why it's such an um, eclectic sound, mm -hmm. first album, and this new one. They're always encouraging me to um, refine my stuff and just, and just what I like to say is they kind of uh, definitely take, uh, you know, stuff and polish it and make it better, you know. Right. Right. I'm a di diamond in the rough and they polish me up quite a bit. <laughs> well, would you say even when you were doing Low Nelly that you had you have definite ideas of what you wanted your sound to be. Right? Oh, yeah. You're just blank and just like, you know, you guys do it, you know. No, not at all. I'm very, uh, it's a democracy. The three of us, mm -hmm. we fight, we talk, argue, <laughs> we laugh, we stay up late, trying to get the right cut, the mm -hmm. right track, the right sound. No, I'm very involved. Up to the point, I'm on the keyboard sometimes, yeah. playing playing lines. Well, you're definitely samples. not a cookie cutter artist. Like you said, it's a very unique presentation. Always has been. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm very involved in the rhythmic element. I've been playing instruments since I was a little kid, so I, I love arrangements. My, mm -hmm. my, my, my family, my grandparents, um, my ancestors, they were all composers and, yeah. and musicians, so it, it runs in the family. I love, I definitely love music a lot. Oh, great. great. Yeah. And I know what I wanted to sound like with Bono, too. I wanted, I definitely want to show my most uh, positive sides as well. I really wanted it to be a high-energy album. Mm -hmm. What was the best experience in making folklore? Like, I don't know when you started or like yeah. from beginning to end. Was it in the you know pre-production stage when you were songwriting? What was what was it? Actually, folklore was kind of like a fluke. 
because I didn't know if I was going to make another album, because the music business kind of made me a little tired, because it's so demanding, and it's hot lifestyle, and I like behind the scenes as well. As I said, I like, you know, I like the production aspect, I like just chilling out in the studio. So this idea of being in front of the camera all the time, I guess kind of got to me after a while, and I kind of went, mm, I don't know if I want to get back in the game right away, I think I might want to go back to university or something. Yeah. And then I was, you know, speaking to my manager, and he said, you know, why don't you hook up a track and field again? Mm -hmm and just see what happens. And so I got into the studio. By that time, I was actually already five or six months pregnant with my, my first daughter, my first child, Nubis. Mm -hmm. And the day we got in the studio, we recorded Powerless, and it was like magic. We went, wow, we should, we should, we should do this. Wow. Like you didn't skip a beat. Totally, yeah. totally. Twelve weeks later, we had uh, we had the whole album done. And, and it's, it's all Wait. Canadian product. That's cool. Twelve weeks. Twelve weeks. Uh, yeah, it was real quick. For me, it was like therapeutic. It's such a cliche, mm -hmm. but it was it's kind of a selfish cool. album. It's still got that energy and that youthful... Oh, yeah. um, electricity, mm -hmm. but it's a little more emotional. It pulls up the heartstrings a little bit more. It kind of makes you reflect a little bit more, and I did some reflection, definitely. I kind of thought about my whole life in general, so I talk about things like, you know, coming from an immigrant background, mm -hmm. my parents, talking about coming from a working class background. Now, for a lot of people already know, big fans of your that you're of Portuguese descent. Yes, yes, my parents were born in the Azores Islands, mm -hmm. and I, I was born in Victoria. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Very <laughs> proud. <laughs> and you've definitely, in the last few years, uh, moved around a lot. I, you lived in Los Angeles. Of course, we know you've uh, had a lot of experience in the East and Toronto. Yeah. Uh, and there, does that, those experiences inspire you? Is that why you move? You think, I just need to get the energy flowing. I got to uh -huh. move and see what happens. Definitely. That's what I'm like. Mm -hmm. I like to just uh, keep going, keep moving, stay inspired, stay on top of things, explore. You know, I like this idea of you, you really got to find things out for yourself. You, you know, feel so you like that has to be hard, though? Like, do you feel those fears have to be kind of tough and, you know, throw you around a little bit in order yeah, to Yeah, I do believe in that. Mm -hmm. I believe that as human beings, it is adversity that makes us stronger, yeah. definitely. You just got to roll around in the muck a little bit, you know, and I've, I've definitely experienced some cool things in my life because mm -hmm. I feel pretty strong, but I'm growing all the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm always like, my goal is always to get better as an artist. Like, mm -hmm. I, could, I don't care about the commercial aspect so mm -hmm. much. I do like to reach people mm -hmm. and I like for my music to get better but it's more like yeah. if I listen to the CD at the end, how do I feel? When I listen to folklore at the end, I went, wow, I'm excited about music mm -hmm. again. And that's the greatest gift for me. Uh, quick question about Forza, of course, that yeah. was, uh, you know, the official anthem of your 2004. How did that yeah. opportunity come about? The opportunity was presented to me a year ago, mm -hmm. last summer, you know, while I was doing folklore mm -hmm. and, you know, they said, you know, Euro Cup, they want you to write a song because, you know, since you sing in Portuguese and English and you're Portuguese Canadian, they think you're perfect. And I was like, wow. This Did is... you feel pressure? Oh, I felt pressure. Come on, you know. Yeah. Ole, ole, ole. <laughs> go, go. Exactly. How can you compete with Ricky, man? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to focus. i got to make it my own. Mm -hmm. i got to focus on the feminine aspects. i got to focus on the, the passion, mm -hmm. the beautiful game. So... I decided to, to, to pull on the emotional side, and we came up with Forza. It's got authentic uh, Portuguese accordion. Mm -hmm. It's got um, this wicked, famous banjo player named Bela Fleck. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's an authentic world pop type of. It also has Indian tabla drum. Yes. So it's a world pop kind of song. Very much so. There is a yeah. very strong world beat influence, but you know, again, it's uh, you know it's a commercial hit. That's great. So, you know. That's great. Dream come true. What do you do when you're not Nelly Furtado, the singer songwriter? <laughs> what it kind of was, you know, when I'm home, I'm taking off that. That, that persona, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. It's kind of funny because it goes and goes back and forth all the time. Because I find that definitely my persona is actually quite similar to what I really am. Um, at times different, but yeah. you show your most positive side. Sure. I can be really chill and really reflective mm -hmm. and really like, I'm always thinking. I'm always thinking about the next battle, mm -hmm. the next, uh, I think about the world a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why I get involved with so many things, like yes. the coalition thing I'm doing tonight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important to me. It makes me feel alive. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm a young person. You're only this age once. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to make the most of our youthful energy and just try to try to grow. And, and just participate exactly. in your life. And exactly. Stuff. So if you weren't doing what you're doing now, which is a whole lot of fun, what would you be doing? Do um, you ever want to be like a nurse or a dentist or something crazy in accounting? <laughs> I'd be an accountant. No, I'm, I'm terrible at math. I would love to be one. Mm -hmm. I envy all you accountants. But um, I actually would love to be a writer. Mm -hmm. I was studying that at, at uh, university, actually, most in college before I started doing this. And it would be fun to write books or something, mm -hmm. do that. Um, a second career, perhaps? As a little kid, I dreamt of being a fashion designer. <laughs> but uh, no, I definitely would love to write. I like writing and more humanitarian stuff would be great too. Now, of course, I mean, you're certainly not hard on the eyes. Have you thought about acting? 
any acting? Have they come calling? Has Hollywood said, you know what, we, you're perfect for this picture? Yeah, it's funny. I guess when you're a pop singer, people think you'd be a good actor or at least maybe sell tickets or something. <laughs> box office tickets. So, yeah, I've read some things. Um, and I'm just looking for the right thing. And, and also, I'm, there's an element of fear because I don't. <laughs> I'm chicken, it's something new, and you know how it is in life, but, uh... Is there anything... I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna do it! that you've read, or any person that you I'm absolutely passionate about this story? Well, just like my music, anything with a multicultural edge to it, yes. I'm into. Because I feel like it only elevates, you know, it mm -hmm. elevates awareness, it elevates, um, consciousness in mm -hmm. general. So, the same way in anything I choose to do, if I do decide to do a little bit of acting, I don't think I would do it all the time, but... I, I actually have my eye on one project, um, which is sort of a, has a multicultural theme to it, um, but just something like that, you know? And I'm always looking for something with something an edge. different. Yeah. Hip-hop influences, R&B influences, past and present, what are they? Oh my god, um, early R&B influences, like salt and Pepper, um, TLC, first tape I bought was on the TLC tip, mm -hmm. my own money, I was 12 years old. Center in Victoria, <laughs> yeah, it's a good day. Mm -hmm. um, I listened to Ice T, LL Cool J as a kid. I listened to Criss Cross, mm -hmm. High Five, Voice of Men, a lot of Mary J. Blige, Harris, mm -hmm. actually, um, De La Soul, mm -hmm. Tribe Called Quest, Souls of Mischief, all the high school mm -hmm. stuff, Dell. Um, I'd love to see your record. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of different mm -hmm. things. Currently, I love The Roots, still love The Roots, yep. love Chaos. Mm -hmm. um, man, Shankini is opening the show tonight. Mm -hmm. Check her out, MC Shankini. BC's finest. Um, uh, just whatever, 12 members. <laughs> mm -hmm. Homies. Yeah. So just. From Victoria. Kia Kadir from Victoria, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I like underground stuff. Mm -hmm. I like keeping my ear to the, to the street, seeing what's going on. Um, current stuff. <sighs> you know, I like. You're walking around to the peas a little bit. Before. I like Black Eyed Peas. Um, I discovered this Norwegian act named Beauty Bell. Oh. There's some new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, The new Ruth album is going yeah. on in a lot. It's a good point. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. so. Canadian uh, fans, what's been the response we've called? Actually, Lau, too. This band from Toronto, LAL. I'm listening to them today. They're really good. Oh, well, that's another one. Yes. Erica Badu, I was listening to you today. Mm -hmm. Even at Woodlot Underground, it's a good record. Mm -hmm. Mama's Gun is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. so. Goes on and on! Yeah, but it does. It does. Fans, <laughs> uh, you've been going through a few Canadian uh, cities. What's uh, been the highlights? And also, what has the reaction been to uh, your live performances as well as the CD? I love Amory too. Uh -huh. Abbey City, Amory, mm -hmm. all I have, and mm -hmm. Reese, how I do. Oh, Those are two great albums. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my fan reaction? Mm -hmm. My fan reaction. Um, my fans are so great. They all have these huge smiles on their faces <laughs> and bright eyes, mm -hmm. and a lot of times we're wearing bright colors. <laughs> no, and mm -hmm. they're just um, alive. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. Also, very, uh, very diverse. Mm -hmm. All ages. All backgrounds, all beliefs, all just nice. It's amazing. Nice it makes me fun. proud. Yeah. So the reaction has been very strong in your Canadian dates. Yeah, just oh, it's kind of funny when you see the difference. Like when you get to BC and Kelowna, we had our show, and just everybody's jazzing <laughs> with their nice <laughs> summer tan. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Well, I thank you for coming in today. Thank you. A few thoughts on things. Of course, you're going to be at the Orpheum tonight. Uh, doors open at 8, right? Or you go on stage at 8? Uh, doors yeah. open at 7. Yeah, doors open at 7. Open doors open at 7. I'm on 9 o'clock. Okay, 9 o'clock. 9.15, okay. actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tickets, yeah. There might be tickets available. There might be a few? Yeah. Okay, okay. So the Check Orpheum in Vancouver and then tomorrow yeah. you're going back to your hometown. You'll be in Victoria. I'm going to be in Victoria tomorrow night. Okay. The, the Royal, Royal Theatre. Theater. Yeah. So, again, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. Hello to everyone out there. We're going to listen to Nelly 